Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today is uh, co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle, host also of Artie's talk show, Crosstalk. So yesterday, uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken delivered a maiden foreign policy address, his first uh, major uh, statement on foreign policy. Um, and it wasn't um, delivered in the usual setting of friendly uh, foreign policy types sitting in comfy uh, State Department chairs. Uh, this was entirely virtual and he was addressing the American people. Uh, the address coincides with the issuance of, by the Biden administration of a foreign policy guidance, that this is to be the foreign policy agenda of the Biden administration. And the address is rather peculiar because um, Blinken starts off by claiming that he will now spell out a foreign policy vision that will do something for individual Americans and their families. Um, so this all sounds very promising. Very exciting. Um, yeah, exactly. So go good. You know, what's he going to do for my family and so on? Uh, but then he <laughs> went off on a on a happy segue in talking about American values and American democracy. The Biden document, uh, which is a very tedious read and I don't recommend anyone to read it, is 24 pages long. The word values appears 25 times. 25 times it appears values. So that's where the Biden administration is. Um, it's trying to build these uh, coalitions of democracies for no other purpose other than to foster democracy with a view to building yet even more coalitions of democracy. Um, unable, Biden, Blinken, and one has to assume that the Biden document was written by Blinken himself, is unable to address any specific national interest that the Biden team wants to secure. Um, and hence, we're back to the kind of traditional, uh, I would say more, more or less kind of democratic uh, agenda of some vague nebulous sounding goals with the Clinton administration. It was kind of humanitarian intervention. We're gonna you know, save, save the world from terrible people uh, back, back in the nineties from terrible people like Slobodan Milosevic. Um, now we're creating these coalitions of democracy because of bad people like uh, Putin, uh, like Xi. And of course, though he didn't mention it, uh, I am sure uh, joining that list will be Hungary's uh, Viktor Orban, uh, because Biden, because Blinken has a particular family Looking connection him, yeah. to Hungary. So this maiden foreign policy speech um, dressed up as we're going to do something for American people and their families, came up with nothing but uh, vacuous platitudes. Peter, what was your take? Well, you, you, you said um, this was the maiden speech. Well, I would have said this was a speech from an old maid, okay? Because nothing new was said. American foreign policy interests were not defined at all, except through the, the prism of values, whatever that is. I mean, any talks about democracy when democracy is challenged within America, not from outsiders, by the establishment right, itself right, right. clinging on to power. Right. Uh, and, and of course, um, uh, it was never, the word was never used. And I keep stressing this in our podcasts is that American foreign policy uh, under a, a normal Republican and a normal Democrat, Trump is different for, in so many different ways. And we have discussed this ad nauseum here, but it's basically not to further American foreign policy interests per se, but it is to make sure that no single country or series of countries can challenge American hegemony. And that hegemony is, um, um, uh, the, it's arch, the architecture of that hegemony is neoliberalism, which is also not mentioned in the document whatsoever. So 
you know, Blinken is just batting against flies as far as I can see, okay, and hitting nothing. Right. And, and this is, this is and, if, and plus, the, the, if you look what he had to say, you can, you can, it can justify any foreign policy move. Right. Well, and, that's and, and that's maybe the good thing about it because it can justify anything. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's what I, I meant when I said that it's the democratic administration. It's the same policy, as you say, global hegemony, uh, but you dress it up with uh, mellifluous uh, honeyed words uh, like democracy, uh, coalitions of dem democratic powers, values. Um, and that's, that, that's what it is. I mean, this is, this is why you, that, um, you, know, you come along the media love this sort of thing. Oh, which is we, 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 this is very different from the bad old Trump days. This is this is we're now for good things. You know, we're for human rights. We're for democracy. This is the thing. Yeah, but it's the same thing. You're going to be coercing. And Blinken does uh, clearly spell out that there there intends to be a, a lot of coercing. Now, of course, he he says, well, we're not going to use military means. You know, no, no, no. You know, forget all that. Um, but of course. Um, when he says military means, he says there'll be no direct U.S. military intervention. Well, even that we don't have to believe. But, but I mean, the U.S. can be extremely destructive, as we've seen, when it's indirect, when it's sponsoring uh, insurgencies in other countries, when it's using sanctions in a very brutal way, as it is doing uh, in Syria, as it's doing in Venezuela, all of which Blinken is more than happy with. So these empty promises like, well, we're not, we're not going to do all those bad things that we used to do, like Iraq. No, 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 no. We, we just want democracy. <laughs> so nothing he says there that has any plausibility. Let's, let's quote him, uh, Mr. Blinken here. Quote, China is the only country with the economic, diplomatic, military, and technological power to seriously challenge the stable and open international system. The stable and open international system. Okay, what it, let's define that. That's the system that the United States has imposed. That is, that is the architecture of its uh, uh, hegemony. And as I pointed out, it is, up, uh, it is uh, supported. Uh, uh, its its um, superstructure, if we can put it that way, is neoliberal ideology. Let me continue here. All the rules, values, and relationship that make the world work the way we want it to. Honestly, at least, he's being honest, the way we want it to, because it ultimately serves the interests and reflects the values of the American people. That is simply not true. That is a false. And we can empirically prove it. Okay, let me say it. Okay. Um, all the rules, values, and relationships that make the world the way we want it to because it ultimately serves the interests and reflects the values of the American people. I would say that the American foreign policy, particularly since the end of the Cold War, have not in any way, shape and form um, um, benefited the American people, not its economy, not its competitiveness, um, and, and not its, it, its perception in the world, okay? Yeah. All of this is, is patently untrue. And, it, and it's a dark foreboding, is that if you're, you're going to continue to do what does not work. Well, that's the thing. And that's why it's a, a, a very interesting uh, contrast uh, with Trump, because in Trump in 2016 did uh, spell out a foreign policy that would uh, benefit ordinary American people. It was interest driven. Right. In other words, he's saying, OK, we will seek to make America a major manufacturing power. Uh, we will uh, compete uh, glo globally with China. We will not allow China to take uh, economic advantage of us. We will not allow the, our European allies to take advantage of us, you know, which we, we allowed during the Cold War. But since the Cold War is gone, why continue to allow it? We will not get into stupid military interventions uh, around the world, which do nothing for the United States. and. Uh, we will uh, improve relations with Russia because Russia may be a useful ally against China. He had an agenda, um, the goal of which was to help individual Americans. Now, uh, for a variety of reasons, which we've talked about before, uh, he didn't really pursue this agenda with any determination or consistency. Nonetheless, it was an agenda. The uh, Blinken team, uh, have completely abandoned any of that 
And then in its place, they think, well, now what is our foreign policy going to be? Ah, we're going to be promoting democracies. And then when you ask, well, what national interests are going to be realized as a result? Well, uh, democracy is a good thing and democracies don't go to war uh, with uh, one another and therefore that they all help one another. None of that is incidentally true because- Well, I mean, it, it, maybe, you know, I, 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 I get this all the time. Michael McFowell, that's his favorite that's thing. His, democracies yeah, right. don't go to war against each other. But I, I think this should be an interesting caveat and probably much more important one and something that we, we will face in this century. Will democracies go to war to protect other democracies? That is, that, that's an interesting proposition. So Australia is going to go to war with China if there is a uh, flare up on the Indian Chinese border. Really? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, but, yeah, but that, okay. When China and Japan argue over a bunch of rocks, oh, South Korea is going to come in onto Japan's right, side. Right, yeah. This is all nonsense. Well, of course it's nonsense. Um, uh, but I was always, I mean, you know, NATO declared itself to be a um, defensive power uh, during the Cold War. That well, you know, you know, we we intend no aggressive actions. Uh, against uh, the Soviet Union, but you know, an attack on one is an attack on all. But it abandoned that doctrine uh, without ever, uh, you know, changing the terms of the North Atlantic uh, Treaty. Uh, so it still claims to be a defensive alliance as per the North Atlantic Treaty, even though it does everything in an aggressive way. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that that's why the all these institutions moribund museum pieces uh, continue as before and biden and blinken love it they yeah well, i mean it, this oh, is more and more. oh we got to do for our nato allies and partners oh we got to do more and more for them yeah so th let me get this straight george uh said do not dare attack a nato country but nato countries can attack countries around the world with impunity do yeah. i get it right right absolutely yeah that, that that's exactly right um, and um, yeah, so the, you know, they, they did it in Yugoslavia. You know, not had no bearing whatever on NATO, and they were Libya again. You know, you know, no bearing at all on NATO. And this, this is this alliance and partner that uh, that Blinken invokes, and uh, he obviously you know understands the problem. I mean, he says that you know people are going to wonder what the hell. Is this foreign policy about how how does uh, how, how how do I you know as an American benefit from all of this? So so that's why he's kind of struggling to explain, and of course he can't because it's a foreign policy driven by the foreign policy elites because this is the way they talk among themselves. You know, it's like a bubble; no one else understands anything that they're saying. And of course, you know, the usual military security uh, contractor types who make a huge amount of money on all of this. Uh, but, you know, try explaining anyone outside the bubble why the United States continues to be in Afghanistan after 20 years. I mean, you know, they, they, don't, they don't try explaining anyone outside the bubble why the United States bombs uh, people in Syria because of an attack on Americans in Iraq, where Americans are uh, illegal, uh, are illegally present. I mean, they can understand it. That's why it's much better for Blinken and others simply to talk among themselves in that little bubble and you know, no, all understands what they're saying. No one else does. Stay tuned, George. We're going to be uh, Americans are in Syria to protect transgender children that are act, uh, or that uh, have the uh, Kurdish ethnicity. Wait for it. It's coming. Preview. You heard it here first. Okay. One of the things that I think that's so, it's so lacking here, and I, and I would really like uh, someone that has power within the foreign policy establishment to say, moving forward, the basis of our foreign policy decision protecting our national interests will be through international law. Right. Those are that was those were some simple sentences. They they right. weren't compound. They right. were simple. Okay. Right. You don't get that in this document whatsoever right. because international law is what you have to do, not what I have to do, okay? And it's a, you use it when it, you find it necessary, but you'll break it a, 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 in a heartbeat if, if it, it's a, in tune with your foreign policy objectives, which right. of course, if you read the document, we'll read his speech, I don't know what those objectives are, okay? I certainly don't see how it benefits the American people and right. families, I don't. 
Right. Well, that's it. Uh, but, but what's amusing is that uh, these uh, people like uh, Blinken, they use this uh, rhetoric of uh, international law. Uh, the, you know, we don't take military action without uh, consulting the American people, without consulting uh, Congress. None of it is true. No, not one word is true. But but because he says it, you know, the media, you know, yes, 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 this is good. I mean, Trump never even pretended to that. And so everyone was in terrible, horrified, you know, what, what a terrible person. He doesn't even pretend to be following international law or the United Nations. You, you know, people like Blinken, they, you know, they, they pretend that they follow all of these things. But of course, they don't. And so he, you know, he, he pretends in this speech that somehow Biden's bombing of Syria was uh, in accordance with uh, both international law and domestic law. I okay, mean, let's go back. You know, remember when there was the vote in the House of Commons uh, about using military action against Syria? It failed. Okay, then the Obama administration got cold feet and didn't even want Congress to talk about it. why? Because people would express their opinion about foreign policy. They are never asked that. When is the last time the United States declared war through Congress? The Second World War. World War II, exactly. Look at all of the conflicts. And has anybody consulted the people? No. Okay. What is you know that would be that would be democracy in foreign policy. Of course, the rubes can't be involved in this. Okay, they don't even know their own interests, which I would say just the opposite. The 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 the, uh, the, uh, the middle class people, working people in America, are painfully aware of what their interests are, and those fools in Washington don't. They, they might be vaguely aware of it, but you know, they're higher causes. Okay, like their careers. Well, that's the thing that the moment you get uh, the the public involved. They, turn, they, they don't like these foreign policy interventions. That's why when, um, I think it was Cameron in 2013 when he had that um, vote in, um, in, in the House of Commons, it came as a surprise to him that they voted it down. And then you're right, uh, Obama got cold feet uh, and, and you know, so he started to, you know, mumbling about and the Russians, I think by mistake, I think bailed him out by, by coming to the agreement about with the chemical weapons, they're going, we'll come with chemical weapons, Obama saved face as a result. Uh, but of course then Obama, you know, you know turned around and, uh, and, and completely, you know, betrayed the Russians over uh, Ukraine. Um, but, but nonetheless, I mean, that, that's what happens when you get people involved. I remember back in, I think it was a long time ago, in 1998, uh, the Clinton administration was about to bomb Iraq, you know, as it was always bombing every other day in Iraq. Um, and Madeleine Albright was having a kind of town hall meeting. And lo and behold, people were asking very good questions. You know, like, what right do we have to tell Iraq what, what weapons it can or can't have? And, um, you know, what, what good is just bombing it you know, uh, do for it? And Albright had no ability to answer these questions or very good questions. You know, the, you know, once you get out of the bubble, you know, of those Sunday talk shows when every, everyone just, they're all just talking among themselves and ordinary people ask common sense questions, they suddenly don't know what, what the answers are. So uh, that, that, that's, that's why you can't possibly allow the public to have any say in foreign policy, yeah. any say in all the things that are done in their name. If this so-called uh, uh, COVID stimulus bill, which is it's 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 only nine percent of the one point what two billion um, uh, uh, dollars, only nine percent of it has anything to do with COVID. But go into it. There's a ton of foreign aid. Where's the aid for the middle class? Where is that? No, that's not coming. No. I mean, maybe it would be better for the middle class to move to Pakistan. They might get something out of it. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. No, see, you're absolutely right, and this is what's so dysfunctional. Well, one of the most important reasons why American foreign policy is so dysfunctional is it doesn't take into account uh, what people want, and 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 they and they they don't and these same people don't stand up to uh, scrutiny of whatsoever. You're absolutely right; they fall on their face. It's really quite embarrassing right. because these symbols are very very simple. What do I get out of this? Right. What, I mean, how does it make my life better stationing right. troops illegally in Syria? Well, how does that work? What is the benefit for America? Right. That, 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 exactly. So that, 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 that's, that's exactly right. Um, so you come along with this uh, foreign policy vision and, and, I, and as I said, you know, Blinken then says, yeah, well, I'm about to spell out how Americans uh, will benefit from this. 
And then, as you know, you wait, yeah, yeah, well, tell us now. And said, well, because, you know, democracies are great things. And when they're all working together, then democracies are working together and they're promoting democracy for the sake of democracies. And, you know, and Putin is really unhappy about this. So that, must, that means it must be a good thing. It isn't actually any more subtle than that, incidentally. I mean, well, you know, it, it, is, it is about as stupid as I've described well, it. There is no empirical evidence, not one scintilla of evidence that China, Russia, Iran are against democracy. There's no evidence. Please present it to us in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. Right. There's no empirical evidence. It's a it's a talking point. Yeah. Okay. What I what I find you know just galling is that you know look at the treatment of the yellow vest in France. You know, talking about you know values in the middle right. in and interest of, of working people. It's simply not there. The right. Right. Uh, bear on reality. Yep. No, that, 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 that's, that's exactly right. Um, all right. Well, Peter, thank you very much. Um, we will maintain our laser-like focus on um, the doings of the Biden Blinken team. Uh, remember, we are on Rumble. Uh, look us up there. And if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.